about it and it's not viewed because it's not something that's go you know it's not a technically approved uh it should uh, I, I don't know how they the board, board book board is set book? up but it may be available there yeah okay Shouldn't i can also try share them yeah i would if there's a way to share them yeah, yeah i have not made it um i have not published it board book i can't i can if you want me to aaron will i be able to share a screen on this uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to double check that I have that. Oh, there we go. Teresa's waiting to get into the meeting, Aaron. Yep. All right, she'll be joining soon. But yeah, you should be able to share your screen as well now. So I can, yeah, if that, if that's, I can share it as I talk through them since I've, I think I've got the only two policies on here tonight. Hi, Teresa. No? Yep. Hi, thanks. I was like, the host is not letting me in. <laughs> <laughs> distracted uh, okay <laughs> all right you guys are uh, live and uh, the meeting is uh, running so you can right. call to order and as you okay. go great uh welcome everybody to the policy review committee meeting on may the 12th at 5 p.m um we'll kind of get started with some of our policy changes we'll first reflect um policies that are currently in that we currently have that where changes are being recommended and then also an introduction of a new policy. So I will turn it over to um, Assistant Superintendent Gersich. Uh, thank you. Um, so are you able to see my screen right now? Are you seeing the projected? Yes. Uh, okay, great. Yep. Just want yep. to make sure yep. it looks different. Um, the first policy that I have to, to run through is a minor change to uh, 510, which is school activities. Um, there is a recommended change that actually came directly from MSBA. Uh, the policy did get reviewed by both Jay Lepper, who is our activities director, as well as Guillaume, uh, who is our athletic director at BHS, so that we had some additional uh, perspectives on that. Uh, but the only recommended change is on the last section four responsibility section E that says that the board will ensure that funds raised for extracurricular activities will be spent only on extracurricular activities. Uh, it would be my belief that that's a recommended change as um, activities have come under board control and activities budgets come under board control. It's a clarification in that previously uh, funds that had been raised by student groups for activities needed to be used for those, but they weren't previously under board control. And I think as those things have evolved, it's probably an additional clarifier to make sure that that's still in case, or still the case as those came under board control. So I don't believe it's a change in practice. I believe it's a clarification as those things have shifted. Great, do we have any um, other um, thoughts or comments from the committee? I do not know. I, I have nothing further either. Yep, me neither. I thought it made sense. Yep. Great. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, the second so then, one. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say in our in the new policy coming forward. Mm -hmm. Correct. So oh. this I'm just going to take a minute to kind of give you a little bit of an idea um, of where this stems from. Um, certainly, you know, memorials for deceased student students is a hot button issue. What I what I want people to understand. Um, is at the inception of this policy, certainly we had a number of situations, unfortunately, over the course of this year, where there could have been applications of this policy. Um, but we'd actually started talking about this a little bit myself and uh, Stephanie White, who's our Director of Student Support Services, about a process to develop this policy dating to last spring and into the summer. Just as I, I happen to notice in coming out of um, Metcalf, sorry, I'm getting a little feedback on my... Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll mute here. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, and notice that there was a plaque with a with by a tree. You know, it was a memorial tree. And I would say it's just more my experience as a high school principal. We had some awkwardness. And I went back as a result of thinking of that and said, do we have a memorials policy and realized we really don't. Um, and really, all this is is to help us provide guidance so that there's some consistency in how we would apply or how we memorialize students or, or staff or others within our schools in a sustainable way. 
And again, I had a, a personal experience where this did not turn out very well, and it would have been good to have some of that guidance. Again, just over the course of the summer, unfortunately, we had some incidents that were very close together. We really could have benefited from having some guidance on how we memorialize it, as certainly the rock was used um, in, in support of one student. And then there were questions as to why it wasn't used uh, for another student. And I think those consistencies and when we were dealing with youth and death in general, we, we need some guidance so that we at least have some ability to navigate these things with our students. And I would say our professionals do a fantastic job when it comes down to just offering grief support and to being there when these instances happen. And it's really not about that. We've got those things in place. It's really about some of these memorialized uh, memorials and, and um, ways that students want to commemorate their students within their schools. Um, so just wanted to, to flow through and again, because it's new, I totally understand that it may take some time to review this, to ask questions. Um, I will say that uh, Dana Tompkins, who is one of our coordinators in our student support services department, who also oversees our school sites, this is really a product of the work of our school psychologists. It was really a matter of saying, as much as I knew we needed a policy, I wanna rely on our mental health professionals as much as we can to help us navigate uh, this process, particularly when we get to differentiating at times. There are different policies that you can look at for other districts that will treat things, for example, like suicide differently because of the fact that we get concerned about that becoming attention-seeking behaviors for students who have some depression or other uh, concerns from a mental health perspective, and suicide can become a contagion. And so there are some districts who will not allow memorials after uh, suicides and death by suicide. So again, you're gonna see some of the work of our school psychs playing out in this. They did utilize a lot of uh, literature and research in development of this. Again, it has gone through several iterations with some back and forth in communication, and that may need to continue to be the case as we really, this is something I feel like we need to get right, but certainly we wanna get something in place so that it is gonna help uh, guide our administrators on how they should, again, create some consistency. So again, just kind of talking through it, and I'll certainly trust that you've read it, but just to highlight it too, as we're, we're running through with you know, the various definitions, certainly when it comes down to the statement of policy, um, I think the big highlight is when they're talking about memorials, memorials would be acceptable when you get to item C in a temporary fashion. And it talks about how when you put up balloons or you find ways to commemorate students with, with banners or pictures or other things in a designated area, that that can be a healthy way to help students, adolescents and staff uh, through that grief that's gonna happen as a result of, of death. But you'll also look in part D, it will insist that permanent memorials be endowments or scholarships or books or, or curricular related things, but not becoming physical parts of the school environment as part of a permanent memorial. Um, you'll see the position within this guidance when it talks about after a suicide was to ensure that it doesn't create a stigma or prejudice. Um, based on that, we still continue to allow students to memorialize per the guidance um, above. Um, there are a couple of things here I do think that will need to be tweaked just slightly. I think when we get down to under memorials after suicide items D and E, I think those were meant to be in totality, not just under the heading of memorials after suicide. That talks about how district facilities are not used for memorial services. That would be certainly very common, um, as well as uh, watching anniversary dates. I, I don't think that it was meant to apply just for the suicide issue that was meant for all of them. So I would be likely taking those and moving those up to the general statement of policy section. And then the last piece are some other acceptable ways. Again, these are fairly common practices in yearbooks. Uh, certainly graduation recognition. I know Principal Helke had explained to me how they uh, commemorate with flowers in a statement during the graduation ceremonies. It gives guidance on when it would be or not be acceptable to do things like moment of silence. Again, all ways to try to provide some consistency so that our leadership and our principals have a way to navigate this. What it allows them to be able to say is, no, we can't do blank, but here's what we can do and navigate those again in a consistent way. We had, we had a number of, again, unfortunately, instances that happened over the course of this year with students in connection with our district. And I think there were a lot of, there was some difficulty in navigating the requests. 
Um, and this again is ju is just a matter to try to, to to find a way to streamline that a little bit. And I'll just circle that back up to the top. And again, I just wanted to kind of do the once over and then see what your mm -hmm. thoughts or perspectives are. I think initially it's, is there support for this as a new policy? And then it might be a matter of what are some of the, the questions that we may have or parameters or recommended changes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So um, Darcy, Scott, do you have thoughts, suggestions, changes? Uh, yep, I think over, I agree that it is an important policy is as we move, you know, these, as you said, these come up, you know, it's good to have some guidance um, for them so that we are um, maintaining I don't know, consistency or objectivity or something as we apply um, how this works. So I have a couple of notes. One would be under two A memorials. Um, this just says objects or activities. Um, later we define financial memorials um, so in the form of scholarships. And so we probably need to um, either have an additional financial memorials or or to add the financial memorials as a an additional piece of the definition here. Because um, it's not just the objects or activities. Uh, yep. let's see. Sorry, I lost all my all my notes. All my notes disappeared. So I got I'm trying to do it again here quick. Um, the um, under this is the pen page two, so it is three C. Um, where are where are items displayed for a week? It says they may be displayed for a week until the day of the funeral. Um, um, let me just find that uh, section. And so I'm not sure. Yeah. So it's on page it says page in that two. paragraph, doesn't it? Let see. In, in public areas. In a common area that yeah, can essentially what avoid such allowable temporary. Center. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here's the here's the spirit behind it, and you can tell me if that's what it makes it clear. Yep. What we try to do is keep it in a common space or in a media center where students are able to see it. But working with the school psychs, the thought is you, what you want to try to do is keep it away from desks and lockers um, that become very personal memorial in those spaces because you want it to be something where students can grieve and be there if they elect to do that, but aren't necessarily uh, forced into that just based on the guidance, again, from what they would recommend as a healthy way to do that. Okay. So that's why the, they have okay. a designated area, but if something gets hung up on a locker, they try to move that to the designated area. Got it. Okay. So, so students that can avoid such as a media center. So, we're, okay. So students don't have Correct. to go into the media center. Okay. Um, right. There would be a location where they could go in to see okay. that, but they wouldn't be uh, forced to kind of a thing. Sure. Like, okay. Um, so, Permanent. Um, so it, on the same section, so 3D then, um, maybe some further definition of what a living memorial is. I'm not sure. I don't know what that would be. I don't know. Um, sure. I get endowments, scholarships, books, or items. I don't know what a living memorial is. Like a tree? Is that what you mean? Um, Correct. I think so. But I will okay. absolutely so I just, maybe you know, either add I a definition yeah. or elaborate on that one. Right. So then, and the other, like the piece about the memorials after a suicide, like why are we treating different kinds of student deaths? Or even why are we not treating them differently, but even, I guess, acknowledging the difference between different kinds of student death? Um, so having it, you know, having this memorial after a suicide as its own section even, you know, seems to kind of counteract the first line of paragraph A where it says we try to teach all deaths in the same way. So, so I'm not sure, you know. That's it, a good point. It seems, uh, it's a little, uh, yeah, I don't really, um, I mean, if we don't talk right. about, if we don't even have a section about suicide or even talk about it in anywhere, then that accomplishes the idea of teaching them 
treating all the deaths the same way, the same as any other. Yeah. Treating all the deaths the same. Or maybe. So. Well, what I was just wondering is, would it address that concern if it said, you know, rather than having the separate section, if it said something along the lines of student deaths, including suicide, just as a way to acknowledge that it's any death for any reason without having the whole separate section, possibly. Would that yep. yeah, address I, I do. your concern yeah, there? So just, well, sort of. I mean, I, it's more, so we're, I, I, and I, I completely agree with the last line of that section A where it says memorial, where it is talking about that suicide, is, you know, can be a much different um, impact on the students than, than other deaths and that, you know, just like Brian, you were talking about, you know, before that it's, you know, kind of the it, it, suicide has a different impact on the students than a, a death by cancer or a car accident or, you know, like things like that. And so, right. So this is more, but that piece of it seems to be more like a, like a mental health, you know, counseling support as opposed to memorial kind of thing. And so that's where, like, so I, I agree that this, or, you know, but even I guess a car accident kind of be the same thing too. any kind of like sudden and, you know, violent and, or, you know, thing like that would be, those have different um, impacts. So, yeah, so I, I mean, I don't know that we need to list them out or, you know, something, I guess it's kind of the, kind of the intent of, you know, what's the intent of this section? If we're saying that it's important that if we recognize that suicide is going to have a a more damaging effect or somehow a different effect than a student who dies by you know who's been ill with cancer and dies, I, I agree that's the case. Um, but but does that matter in this in the in the policy of memorials that we do? And I guess the same thing is is suicide, death by suicide, a different um, impact than a student who, a student who dies in a car accident? Um, it, you know, may or may not be different impact, but again, is that relative, is that, does that matter for the purposes of this actual policy of memorials? Mm -hmm. So, because yep. I see more like- What I can do sort of is- feelings. Yep. What I can do is I can take that to Dana and the sites and ask, why maybe they decided to, to call that out if the position was going to be to treat it like the others. Um, again, I know the, the position generally is to worry about that, you know, suicide as a contagion. And if students see significant amounts of attention to a student, they see that as a way to get attention for themselves. Again, adolescence and depression and other kinds of things, not quite reasoning all the way through some of those things. I'm guessing they wanted to call it out so that they knew it was considered but if the position is this, maybe there is a better way to word that, or there is a way just to not call that out as a difference if it's not going to be differentiated right. by policy. So yeah. Brian, yeah, I think yeah, the a, building crisis yeah. team, it may be procedural that they, when it's in that case, they have different procedures to follow. So I tend to agree with Darcy, it's calling it out. So you are treating it differently and maybe it's in the procedure and it may be changed from a lengthy illness too. Um, there are different steps you need to take as a building crisis team. Yeah, I, I completely understand the, the concern about um, the recognition of suicide and, and, um, and we've had, you know, we've had several of those in recent years and, um, I, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, I agree. Um, teenagers don't always think through things very clearly. So, so I, I get that, you know, it's, um, there's just a, there's some, there's somehow a, a, a line between it's all we treat this. And again, this is just as a, this is a policy about memorials as opposed to, um, as opposed to, um, you know, some other you know kind of policy because this is you know we don't want to we don't want to treat this the, the the student or you know in any way diminish or you know recognize that student that the student the student death is or even a um, this is about staff death to the right this is just about school community um, not just students 
gotcha. um, that, yeah. And so, you know, to, to treat suicide differently, um, well, well, we understand that that is, you know, can be a much more significant, you know, concern about for other students and how, um, and how they would react to it. Treating it differently then goes against our, you know, kind of our policy of, we want to make sure we have the same respect for that student and that family, you know, the students who passed away from uh, a lengthy illness or, you know, something like that or. Um, well, and, I, and, and if so, we're really naming those students and staff, it should, we really should be calling out students and staff, you know, so it might be a student or a staff who dies by suicide, you know, I mean, we need to be consistent in, in that respect as well. Um, and I agree that I, you know, having this be a policy about memorializing um, and doing memorials, we need, we'd want to have that consistency in that, and that, you know, all all deaths that we want to treat, you know, and memorialize all deaths in the same way within our district. And don't know, looking later, we haven't cross-referenced other policies. So I don't know if we um, referenced, um, you know, mental health services during loss or, or anything like that, that we would want to be referencing the that, that counseling component because people do react to deaths differently and then and having that support there. It could be a, you know, a parent who, a parent who dies, you know, a popular, you know, a teacher, a coach, uh, you know, you know, it's, if we're talking about school community, it could be um, lots of different people, you know, the, the death of a, um, a coach by suicide could have, you know, pretty damaging effects as well um, for students. And the other cross-reference that I would add to would actually be the financial piece of gifts um, is that's where the, um, like the, on, you know, uh, scholarships, you know, things like that would fall, I think, under that policy. So but that's all I, that's all I had about the policy. Brian, Scott, did you have I needed a clarification. I was curious about Everybody was talking about once. Yeah, I was a question about the permanent memorials. I just wanted to clarify that many schools, including ours, have stadiums and theaters and other things that are named after people. Is this thing that moving forward we would no longer make new that would be named after someone where only not if in the event of their deaths, I guess. Like, I don't know, 50 years from now, we build a new football stadium. Does it, what we're saying we wouldn't be able to name the football stadium after a former beloved coach or teacher or whatever it would have to be, Brunsville High School Stadium, football stadium. Is that, would that be considered a memorial? So we have a like policy? Something like that. We have a policy for naming schools, a, Brian. Correct. So that would be another cross-reference. I don't, I mean, I don't have an answer to the question about, is that a memorial or is that a naming policy item? And I guess that's another cross-reference and one to review to find right. out how but, is that covered and how might that conflict with this potential policy? Yeah, because yeah. there's people that will Thank receive you. money as a part of of someone's um, death, and sometimes it's a substantial amount where a family would like to, through whatever, let's say there's a capital improvement campaign, would want to dedicate a wing in memory of the loved one that attended that, you know, school or worked right. at that school. So, I mean, we you could be looking at potential, you know, dollars attached to getting their name on something. Right. I think we want to give ourselves this flexibility to be able to do that should we decide that's something we want to do in the future. I agree yeah. that as a general concept, we'll see if we can't but fight. I think we need to have some flexibility. And I also agree with the it's other policy point. Policy 899. Is both of them about oh, okay thanks 
um, agreeing with them about making sure that we're using consistent language throughout of the policy for students and staff. Do we see a place that it doesn't? Because I was trying to look through that and it is intended to be all encompassing. Are there places where it refers to death of student or death of individual? It's Did really more, that just, it's that, really. Because that, that's come up a couple of times. Yeah, it, it, My the whole memorial after students, students just because that's how it dealt really, with this year, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I think just I think within the examples, oh, but I think when we look at the whole section of memorial after a suicide, it's only really naming a student, not not a faculty right. member. Got it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my internet flickered for a minute, so hopefully I didn't cut out in the middle of talking. But that was a good example, Leslie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then also references to the impact. It just references students, not colleagues, on a few occasions. Brian, I did. You said you were going to make a sec a D and E. We're going to move those to the top because it's connected to the entire policy, correct? Yes, probably C, D, C, C, D, and E are all, I think, general C. statements of policy comparatively yeah. to suicide. Yeah. But I would say we may just remove all of the discussions direct to suicide and simply make that stroll. If there's going to be a statement, it might just all be part of general statement of policy versus calling it out separately. It might all flow through one versus having its own title for memorials after suicide, because it applies to everything. Thank you. Sure, yep. that's my initial thought anyways. Like I said, be, as a new policy, it's probably be in go favor of that. different iterations because it really was, yeah, it was, it was taken from some, some baselines, but then it really was uh, modified by the team um, quite a bit, so. Were there other items? Otherwise, my takeaway would be to take this feedback, um, work with Dan at the team, re, uh, check the cross references and add those in and then bring that back in draft form again to policy committee for uh, for review. Uh, yeah, I didn't have any other changes or comments. I think Thanks. my only one was more nitpicky. Um, and it was under, is it two, two or three? I, I'm trying to joggle between. So if you could scroll up to the first page. <laughs> mm -hmm. You bet. So I can see it. It's after the kind of the, the, terms or the definitions it's the it's a it's um yeah three a so um in three th a it um it says that um it's approved through the school's crisis response team you know parentheses uh crt shouldn't the you know would the parentheses be part up up above with the definitions and then it's the crisis response team but it's not really naming building or district which is what is part of the definitions above and so i don't know if we need to be clear in terms of this is the building's crisis response team so it's consistent with the definitions Yep. Sorry, I thought yes, that should be clear and consistent. Sorry, I'm just writing down one. my notes. Yep. Yep. I will uh, take that note and see if we can't include that as well and get that clarification between district and school crisis response team, as well as creating um the crt abbreviation up when it was defined originally 
Is that correct with what your your comment was yep. there, uh, Leslie? Perfect. Yes. Yep. Sorry, Brad. I, yep. I did have one other question. So, where's the point where you're talking about recognition of the anniversaries of? I can't. My document totally overload. So, um, somewhere down in the second. It's in. It's in section it's currently what? section E under uh, memorials. About the anniversaries, yeah. So, can you, if you can get down there, my. I apologize, my document won't load. Um, yep. Yeah, it should so, be up there. I don't there, know if right, there's a yep. lag. Yeah, I see it. So, so who who is is it? Just the first anniversary date? Is it multiple anniversary dates? And is I, it like who who's actually going to yeah, monitor I, this? Yeah, I think that becomes our, our mental health professionals. Uh, again, so just speaking from experience, we would know if there was a particular tragic death that happened that when the, sub, sub, uh, the, the coming anniversary dates, the first and the second, because it happened to be a student, you could just tell because balloons suddenly showed up on the memorial that was there or um, students would, would start to discuss it. It really ends up being our counselors, our social workers, our school sites, our support staff, who know that students were heavily impacted by a particular date. A lot of times they are in tune with our students. They may be a part of grief groups already. Sure. Um, generally speaking, they're in tune when there was a significant impact on a student or a family. And it doesn't have to be something that happened as a connection of a school. Anniversary dates are important for students who lose uh, parents, um, sometimes those can be tragic events. So it, it is our mental health team that ends up following that. How they do that, you know, in a strategic way, I, I honestly don't know un unless it just is a matter of students in their groups or counselors who get to know their students personally. Okay. So this is this is kind yeah, of a, I, yeah, um, not too hard question yeah. back, which is which is how does it relate to being a memorial? You know, so like we have them like this policy is about to get... creating memorials. I, so like my, would another memorial be allowed on the them, anniversary date? My... Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, sorry. We're we're yeah, I'm sorry. The the lag here a few times. I think uh I, I I'd have to go ask them what it was, but I'm guessing what they're really trying to get at from a policy perspective is the final statement that we won't have school-wide recognition of anniversary dates, which is what probably comes back to spontaneous or permanent memorials of anniversaries. So somehow finding a way so they can suggest our professionals will help students on anniversary dates when they have a, a, a noted event or otherwise when they know students need the mental health support, but then to subtly say, but we're not gonna be having spontaneous or permanent memorials pop up as a district, as a school, we're not going to be recognizing anniversary. We won't do moment of silence. You know, some of those other things that are on the next page for anniversary dates is I'm guessing the way that message has come through in a more subtle, less harsh way than saying school recognition of anniversary dates will not occur. It's speculation on my part, but that's what I would see I wonder if, out as a logical reason sure. why it was worded in that way. I wonder if it would be better placed within the general statement of policy section instead of where it is currently, like as a point, yeah, for whatever sure, year, whatever. E would all for sure be under. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. I would further define E though, and I'd bring up that the school-wide recognition of anniversary dates or memorializing mm -hmm. school-wide recognition of anniversary dates will not occur. However, that language is first and then say that they'll be counseling and support knowing that this still is gonna be impacting the students so that it's not, I, I think it's flipped. So like we need to take the, the stance in terms of how it relates to Memorial, but also recognizing we are still, you know, it's important for us to be providing that counseling and support when these dates um, approach. So does that also mean then that like you wouldn't be able to put something on a locker then because that's not really a school wide correct um it doesn't it doesn't relate to the original no, well you know when it happened you know but it so it certainly 
but it also but it's so that's a little bit of a gray area here about um so it's not school wide if it's on you know i put it on my own locker on the anniversary date or you know 20 of us do or 50 of us do on the anniversary date so it's not a school wide um activity um but is that so is that is that sort of is that sort of thing allowed so just, yeah well um, we can certainly clarify that uh, other supportive activities in the previous sentence yeah right. so just so even That's just we'll try to not only clear. students and the but the mental health yeah so, so everybody knows you know what you know kind of what's allowed because it's such a sensitive time we want to make sure that we are kind of have an idea and that's something that those you know the staff then would kind of have to be able to communicate to those students and say here's here's something you can do here's some things that would be that really um so we're treating that in a sensitive and and supportive manner but that doesn't um, take the form of um, disallowed activity. Okay. Okay, that's all I have, Leslie. Great. So then you'll um, tune up this more and then bring it back to the committee, Brian. Yeah, my goal would be to try to capture all this um, as best I can into another draft and bring that back at the next policy review committee for um, okay. another look. And again, as a new policy, it's quite possible we'll need to do that again before we would be prepared to bring it for the board. And I just think yeah. that's a natural part of starting from from zero Absolutely. on a policy to make sure everything's been covered. Yep. You may walk away with reflections, you may talk to other people and suddenly realize there's another piece that we might wanna bring forward. So I appreciate the feedback. Yep, that's Absolutely. great. Yep, that's good. It's a nice, it's a great start. Yep. And then, so the only next thing on our agenda is determination of consent or action items for upcoming board meeting. And so we'd want to move forward um, the, you know, the policy change revision with um, five, you know, policy 510 school board activities, our school activities, MSBA 2019. So, um, because I'm still new into this in this seat, does this just go on to the consent agenda or does this have to go to a first read? It's Jamie's. Jamie's. It can go right. on the consent. Okay. Because so it's non substantive. Okay. So then we can add that to the consent agenda. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Great. So we don't have any other policies to review tonight. So I think we're okay to adjourn if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> Three. 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 Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Sorry for the sorry so for the glitchy adjourned. connections. <laughs> no problem. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.